My name is Greta Berlin. I live in Charmouth Forest and I make sculpture from mostly steel. I make sculpture, I think, because I'm a, I'm a visual person. I respond to life visually. And sculpture is my vocabulary. I have no other way of expressing what I feel other than through sculpture and occasionally painting, but mostly sculpture. I've always lived in isolated places and that's where I feel most comfortable, where I can express myself through my work. That's a, the irony of, of my work. It is about people and yet I don't have a lot to do with people. I think I'm an observer. Um, I can spend a day looking into a pond, but it doesn't reflect in my work at all. My work is all to do with the trouble out there in the world. I think. My isolation, my self-imposed isolation, is because I'm terrified of what's going on in the world. The, the, the way people are suffering from the cruelty of our fellow man. I was introduced to all my materials quite young and stone because my dad was a sculptor and I used to lie and watch him make his pieces. We lived at one time on the leech pottery and the smell and everything to do with clay came into my life when I was about five. I might see a shadow or a photograph or somebody doing something or hear a piece of news and it's like a shutter goes off in my head and I have an image pretty much finished in my mind. And then, I mean, it's as basic as the first piece of steel you put on the plate, weld on the plate, which is going to be, say, the leg, has to be at the right angle and you build on that, it's constructed. Very different from stone, which is take away. All the stuff I do now is constructed and um, it's fast and furious and I can cut and change as I go along. And then, once I'm sure of where I'm going with it, the materials take over and I let the materials speak as well. Yes, I'm including uh, Fish Boy. Uh, skateboarder is also in it. These are both steel pieces about youth and energy. And I'm also showing Lost Identity. This piece is called Lost Identity and it's made with uh, steel, uh, a steel armature on a steel plate. And when the armature was finished, I had it galvanized, which you can see here, the silvery, and that's to stop it going rusty. After I get it back from the galvanizers, I cover it in mesh, uh, a wire mesh, which you can see here and to get the basic form to fill out some of the places I want filled out and then I cover it in a scrim that's soaked in jasmineite and the scrim is fibreglass so I very much left the texture of the fibreglass tearing um, in a thin mix of jasmineite and in some places like on the face I've used a thicker mix of jasmineite to get the features I really love this group of hands. Um, her hands are here and here, shielding her face. And here's an arm coming round from the man, comforting her or protecting her. And this is a group of three people huddled under a blanket. So they're like joined by this membrane. And the, the wind is blowing them in the back. So the blanket is pushed close against their bodies so the body is revealed uh, but as you walk round the front you see the materials are torn across their front so they you can see into their bodies and the tearing is to indicate how they've lost everything 
It's been a long one, this one. It's taken me longer than almost any piece I've ever done. It's taken about six months. And it started from a photograph in the newspaper of people being covering, covering themselves with a shroud during a dust storm. And it addresses directly the migrant crisis at the moment. But it is a fairly universal fear that we all have, that one day we'll lose everything, or we could lose everything. There's an adage, which is fairly well worn, that art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. And that, um, that sits quite well with me.